Evet, tekrar hepinize günaydın. Uh, let me start uh, by reminding you what we were doing last time. Uh, we were uh, doing uh, we defined accumulation point. Accumulation point uh, of a subset of real numbers uh, is defined as follows. Uh, accumulation point is just a point of real numbers uh, so this is uh, there's a typo here it doesn't have to be a point of s right it's have to be a point of real numbers uh, such that uh, for every epsilon this interval contains infinitely many elements from s okay and we gave an example last time and this accumulation uh, for this S the set of accumulation points which we denote by S prime uh, we also call this the derived set of S uh, it is uh, the closed interval 0 1 as you see 0 is not an element of S but it's an element of S prime on the other hand 2 is an element of S, but it is not in the set of uh, accumulation points of S. And uh, an equivalent statement was this. A real number, again, A is an accumulation point of S if this deleted neighborhood contains at least one point from S. Okay. Alright. Now let me continue uh, as a consequence immediate consequence of the definition any uh, finite set has no accumulation point because by definition uh, every interval about that inter uh, you know a, uh, an accumulation point should contain infinitely many elements from s but if the set has only finitely many elements this is never you know possible so finite set has no accumulation points and we saw again the set of integers has no accumulation points because any interval about a real number uh, contains a finite interval contains only finitely many integers right so uh, you can easily find intervals which contains uh, finitely many integers therefore the definition of accumulation points is not satisfied okay now uh, there is a uh, proposition uh, let me state this proposition and then let's talk about it this is an equivalent condition again equivalent statement for a accumulation point so a number a real number number a uh, is an accumulation point accumulation point of uh, s if and only if, only if there is a sequence a n of elements of S with the following property, uh, they have to converge a. And they have uh, the elements of the sequence are different. And limit a n is equal to uh, a. Okay. So this is the statement. Uh, in the proof, I will also draw some pictures and explain why this is the case. F 
first let's start from uh, this direction so uh, assume that assume that A is an accumulation point accumulation point of S so uh, to prove this direction I have to construct a sequence uh, of elements of S so that these elements are different and they converge to A the idea is very simple let me describe you the idea suppose this is the accumulation point okay well I will draw okay we are on the real line so I, okay here is the real line and here is my accumulation point first I draw an interval of length 1 okay let's say length 1 by an equivalent condition of being an accumulation point we know that there is an element of S in the deleted neighborhood so there is an element of s in this interval and that element is not equal to a because it is in the deleted element let's call it s1 okay <clears throat> and here this distance is just one unit right this is just a plus one and this is a minus one and then we proceed as follows since s1 is not equal to a there is a positive distance here okay I uh, choose uh, so we start with R1 which is 1 I choose R2 to be the minimum of minimum of 1 over 2 and uh, S1 uh, minus A okay this distance so I look at this distance and compare it with uh, uh, 1 over 2 whichever is smaller I choose that one so let's say 1 over 2 is somewhere here and then I look at this interval the interval of radius 1 over 2 again since A is an accumulation point there is an S2 in this interval and this uh, S2 is again different than A and I will proceed as uh, you know similarly so here the first you see uh, S1 uh, or maybe I should call this not S but A1 A2 A1 A2 A1 is you know close to A only one unit right A2 is close to A how much well it is in this interval and the radius of this interval is less than 1 over 2 uh, and I will proceed as follows okay I will consider I will find a n with distance less than 1 over and so on and this will finish the proof okay is this understood the idea now I will write it in more detail Okay, that's the idea but now I will write it in more detail okay ben duyuyorsunuz değil mi arkadaşlar tamam okay so let uh, uh, R1 to be equal to one okay then then the interval interval so uh, accumulation point minus uh, R1 accumulation point plus R1 uh, Uh, contains uh, satisfy this 
So the deleted neighborhood. The deleted neighborhood intersection with S is not empty, right? That's the condition. Okay, so choose a1 from this intersection a minus r1 a plus r1 minus a intersection s then a1 is in s and what uh, the this a1 is in this interval therefore a1 minus a is less than r1 which is just one okay And I know that uh, a1 is not equal to a, right? Uh, since uh, a1 is not equal to a, is not equal to a, a1 minus a, the absolute value is positive, right? It is not zero. Now let, let r2 to be the minimum of this real number a1 minus a and 1 over 2 whatever is uh, you know smaller I choose that real number and and choose uh, some a2 from this intersection a minus r2 a plus R2 minus A intersection S. I know that this uh, intersection is never empty. Therefore, I can choose some A2. Well, first of all, the distance uh, from A2 to uh, uh, A2 to A uh, since the distance a2 to a is less than r2 and that distance right this is less than r2 and r2 is less than or equal to a1 minus a right so these two distances are never the same we get we get first of all a2 is different than a1 okay they cannot be equal and uh, moreover moreover the distance between a2 and a is less than r2 again and r2 is less than or equal to 1 over 2 so you see what we obtain here okay here I obtained some a1 which satisfy this and then I choose some a2 again from s of course because it is in this uh, set and a2 satisfies this and a2 is less than 1 over 2 okay I'll just uh, continue doing this inductively actively choose a n from this interval r uh, n a plus r n minus a intersection s with this property uh, where sorry where rn will be this rn will be this minimum of uh, minimum of so for r2 i used a1 i will use uh, a n minus 1 minus a and for r2 i used 1 over 2 i will use 1 over n intersection s okay uh, then, then this a n, this a n, uh, as before, then 
a n is in s and satisfies satisfies you see a n minus a is less than or equal to well sorry strictly less than r n because it is in this interval and r n is uh, less than or equal to a n minus 1 minus a and therefore a n is different than uh, well actually it is less than this okay all right this is less than uh, a n minus 1 minus 1 and it is also less than actually uh, the distance between all the uh, R ends right not just this maybe I should write this uh, RK I should write uh, all R okay R n sorry uh, but this distance is uh, less than you see each time uh, this distance a2 minus a is less than a1 minus a uh, a3 minus a uh, a3 minus a will be a2 minus a and so on so I have this and actually indeed I have this uh, a n minus a is less than a uh, k minus a uh, for all k uh, uh, less than or equal to n minus 1 uh, so that so that so that a n is different than a k for all k uh, different than n okay but on the other hand moreover moreover what is the distance between a n and a it is less than r n and that distance is less than or equal to 1 over n okay and this implies what you see uh, this implies claim limit of a n is equal to a why is that well because you see the distance between a n and a is less than 1 over n so given uh, epsilon positive choose n 0 with with what uh, with 1 and 0 larger than 1 over epsilon Archimedean property then n greater than n 0 implies a n minus a is less than uh, okay Pardon, nasıl yapacağız? Epsilon uh, Okay, so this distance is less than 1 over n and 1 over n is less than 1 over n 0 because n greater than n 0 but 1 over n 0 is less than epsilon So, given uh, epsilon positive uh, sorry, we choose n 0 such that if n n is larger than n 0, this implies this distance is less than epsilon. Okay, so uh, this finishes the proof of the uh, claim. Uh, so we constructed, hence uh, we have constructed uh, a sequence a n of elements 
of S with uh, the desired properties with which properties first of all the elements are different and second property limit a n is equal to a okay so this finishes the proof of the half of the proposition right so this proposition was an if and only if statement uh, a is an accumulation point if and only if there is such a sequence we showed that if it is an accumulation there is such sequence now we assume the other uh, part and proof the other direction so uh, for this direction let uh, okay assume that assume that uh, such sequence uh, assume that there is a sequence a n of elements of S with uh, so elements are different and limit a n is equal to a this time it is easy I will use one of the equivalent uh, characterizations of or definitions of accumulation point so let's do as follows uh, let uh, R be any positive number or epsilon be any positive number uh, be given then uh, there is uh, since the limit is a n there is okay then since limit a n is equal to a there is some index right sum n0 such that such that n greater than n0 implies implies a n minus a is less than epsilon so so all a n's are in this interval a minus epsilon a plus epsilon intersection s right they are both in s and they lie in this interval okay i need uh if of course n is larger than n zero and i need what i need some element of s which is not equal to a well some of these a ends may be equal to a but all a n's are different so if one a n is equal to a then uh, the other a n's with index different than that uh, index will be different than a uh, right therefore they give me the uh, desired property so I, I will write this as follows if if a n zero is different than a then a n zero is the required element this is in this interval uh, in the deleted interval right and we are done we are done well, what if if a n zero is equal to a? If a n zero is equal to a, then a n zero plus one, the next term of the sequence, is different than a n zero. This is less different than a n zero, but a n zero was a, so it is different than uh, a, and. Uh, a n zero plus one will be inside this interval again. Uh, evet, 
aklısın. Yes. Tamam. So this will finish the proof. Okay. Uh, and okay. This finishes the proof. Finishes the proof. Evet, buraya kadar bir sorusu olan var mı? Uh, any questions so far? Okay. Okay. Uh, what else? I think uh, so. If you don't have any question, we may pass to the statement of Bolzano Weierstrass <coughs> using that uh, proposition actually theorem. You have seen, I guess, Bolzano Weierstrass right in advanced calculus. Bolzano Weierstrass. Okay, if S is a bounded subset subset of real numbers, and if S has infinitely many elements, many elements. then S has at least one accumulation point. Accumulation, sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, we will proceed as follows. Okay. Since this set is bounded, you know, it should uh, be contained uh, in some interval, right? It has an upper bound, a lower bound, so all the terms of the sequence lies between these two numbers. All right. Uh, so, uh, since S is bounded, bounded from above and below, okay, uh, both uh, supremum and infimum exist. Exist. And what do we know? And for any S, for any S in S, we have, of course, we have a is less than uh, S and it is less than B, right? Because uh, B is the supremum, A is the infimum, so all the elements of S lies inside this interval. And then uh, let me just explain you the idea. I need to find an accumulation point, right? Assuming that S has infinitely many elements. The idea is very simple. Here is A and here is B. And in this interval, there are infinitely many elements of S. So what we do is uh, the following. We divide this interval into two. So this is A plus B over two. Since S has infinitely many elements, uh, either 
uh, one of these intervals, one of these intervals, either this one or this one, should contain infinitely many elements of, from S. Because if there are only finitely many elements from here, and there are only finitely many elements uh, from S in this interval, then in the whole interval there will be only finitely many elements, right? If there are, let's say, 500 elements from S and 2000 elements from S here, then in total there are only 200 and f uh, 2500 elements from S here. So one of them should contain infinitely many elements. Let's say this one, maybe both of them, but at least one of them. I choose one of them, let's say this one, and then I repeat my procedure. I divide this into two. So uh, either again uh, I repeat the same argument, since there are infinitely many elements from S, either this one or this one has infinitely many elements. Uh, let's say this one, and then I will divide this into two and so on. This way, I will form a sequence of uh, real numbers. Uh, I will start with A0 and B0, okay? And then I looked at this interval, so I will call this one A1. And this one will be B1. And then I said, okay, my interval this time this. So this will be A2 and B2. B2. And then I repeat again. I will find another interval. Let's say A3, B3. Uh, what is the property of those intervals? Those intervals uh, always contain infinitely many elements from A. And you see, by construction, we will have something like this. A0, which was A. A0 is less than or equal to A1. It is less than or equal to A2. And it will continue like this. And on the other hand, uh, B is here, B1. And B2 is larger than or equal to B2, B3 is larger than or equal to B3, and it will continue like this, okay? And moreover, the distance between AN and BN will be how much? Well, uh, distance between A1 and B1, it was half of this, right? So, Maybe I write this. A1, B1 is A0, B0 over 2. A2, B2 is half of this one. So half of this one. So it is A0, B0 over 4. And it goes like this. So distance between AN and BN will be... Uh, 1 over 2 to the power n, right, times, okay, so I should write a0, b0 times 2 to the power n, divided by 2 to the power n. Okay, so I construct such sequences. So, okay. Uh, uh, Okay. First, we construct uh, two sequences of real numbers, so a n and b n. Okay. And b n. So that, so that uh, an is increasing, let me write these properties, an is increasing, so an plus 1, uh, second, bn is decreasing, bn plus 1 is less than bn, Oh, here I made a mistake, right? 
BNs are decreasing. So I should have this. B1, no, B0 is this. B1 is less than B0. B2 is less than uh, B1. Here, uh, B1 is this. I choose first my interval was this and then I choose this one and then this one and so on okay so BN is uh, decreasing and uh, okay the third one distance between BN and AN is uh, the distance B0 minus A0 divided by 2 to the power and and the property uh, we were you know choosing these intervals was what uh, S intersection A and B N is infinite okay right I choose this interval so that they contain infinitely many elements from S. Okay. Well, you see, uh, AN is an increasing sequence, but bounded from below, right? AN is an increasing sequence bounded from above by B. BN is a decreasing sequence bounded from below. So they are both convergent, right? Convergent. And the distance between AN and BN is uh, getting smaller and smaller. Therefore, they converge to the same number, actually. So here is the uh, statement. Uh, AN is uh, bounded, is increasing, is increasing, and bounded from above and BN is decreasing and bounded from below hence Hence, uh, both limits, so both sequences are convergent. So let me write it this way. Limit AN and limit BN exist. Both limits exist because both of the sequences are convergent. However, you see, however, Uh, the distance between AN and BN, right? What is this distance? AN and BN. This is uh, less. No, this was uh, A0 minus B0, 2 to the power N. And therefore, and thus, taking limit. You know this needs a little bit of proof but you know uh, if you take limit limit a n minus limit b n is uh, when you take limit this thing will go to zero is zero so that this limits are equal right these sequences are converging but the distance between the terms are getting smaller and smaller therefore uh, the limits are the same so what we have uh, so let's call this let's uh, call this sorry this common limit x0 okay 
So uh, x0 is just limit of a n and that's, equal, that's also equal to limit of b n. Well, then we have what? Let me draw a picture and explain what's going on. I hear x0, okay? I want to show that this point is an accumulation point for S. How can I do this? Well, I can do this if I can find uh, infinitely many elements in every interval uh, containing... Uh, so, if I can find infinitely many elements from uh, S in any epsilon neighborhood of this point. So, I will choose, you know, epsilon neighborhood here, x0 plus epsilon, x0 minus epsilon. I need to choose that, I need to show that this interval contains infinitely many elements from S. But I know this, a n and b n are converging uh, sequence with limit x0. So, in this epsilon neighborhood, there is some a n, right? a n 0, some a n 1, and there is some b n uh, 2, right? In this interval. By choosing the larger one, I can get this. Maybe I, I choose n 0, n 0, so that this interval a n 0, b n 0 lies here, but I know that the interval a n 0, b n 0 contains infinitely many elements from S. Therefore, this interval contains infinitely many elements from S. That's the proof. So we do as follows. So claim is x 0 is an accumulation point, accumulation point, and for the proof, let epsilon be given. Uh, since limit a n is equal to x zero uh, and epsilon positive, there is some n zero. Let me call it n one, so that so that <clears throat> n greater than n one implies implies a n minus x0 is less than epsilon. Okay. Similarly, similarly, since limit b n is equal to x0, there is some n2, not necessarily n1, so that, so that, n greater than n2 implies implies b n minus b0 is less than epsilon. So after some index, this is less than epsilon. After some other index, this is less than epsilon. So I choose my n0 to be the larger index. Set n0 to be the maximum of n1, n2. Then, then, n0 is larger than both of them. Then we get what? A n0 minus x0 is less than epsilon and B n0 minus epsilon less than epsilon. So exactly this situation, okay, exactly this situation. And I know that since ANs are increasing, they are all in the uh, uh, in this side of x0, and BNs are increasing. Therefore, they are all on this side of uh, x0. Okay. Finally. Finally, uh, uh, a n zero, b n zero, right? This lies inside 
uh, x0 minus epsilon plus epsilon and uh, a and 0 b and 0 intersection s is infinite is infinite and thus x0 minus epsilon x0 plus epsilon s is infinite okay and this finishes the proof you see the idea of the proof is really easy but you know uh, if you want to write things in detail then you have to be careful right uh, it takes <clears throat> a little bit time but you know you can write it down do you have any questions so far Uh, but you see, these uh, ANs are not necessarily from S. ANs are uh, converging to uh, X0. Uh, and actually, we don't know whether X0 is an accumulation. I mean, we don't... Uh, no, you... Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, it would work, but... Uh, we need to know that ANs belong to S and that's not actually uh, certain, right? We don't know that. We didn't choose ANs so that they are uh, from S. Right? We don't know. This ANs doesn't have to be from S. Does this answer your question? Başka sorusu olan var mı arkadaş? Any other question? Okay, so uh, that's an important result. Uh, alayım. Sonuna geldim. Ha yazıyor muydun? Tamam özür dilerim. Tamam. Okay let me give a break then. Uh, in the second I will continue. Okay. Okay. Uh,